Hello and welcome to this OCR GCSE computer science lesson looking at how we can use uh, binary data to store numbers. Before we start there are three quick fire questions on your screen. These all relate to the previous lesson. Pause the video, check that you know the answers and if you're not sure on any of these go back and have a look at the lesson 9 video before you attempt this one. So as I said, this is lesson number 10 of the memory and storage section of the OCR uh, computer science GCSE uh, unit one. This is a really long lesson going over a range of different topics. I would strongly suggest not going through this video in one go unless you are the night before your exam and doing some desperate last minute uh, revision. In terms of where this sits in terms of the bigger picture, uh, Unit 1 is split into six key topics and this sits in the middle of the big topic, the memory and storage section in the middle. We are currently on uh, looking at Lesson 10, Storing Numbers. Uh, from here, it will then go on and look at characters, images, sounds and how we can compress all of those things down. What do we need to know? Well, we're going to look at this idea of binary and hexadecimal and how we can use those to store data. We need to know the terms least and most significant bit and we need to be able to convert between normal numbers, binary numbers and hexadecimal. We're going to look at how we can add binary numbers together, how we can undertake binary shifts and why things like hexadecimal are important. Firstly, well, what is binary? Binary is a number system made up of only two digits, zeros and ones, and it's used by computers to store data in its most basic format. When we think about films like The Matrix and we see the green zeros and ones flying down the screen, that is binary data, and that is the only thing computers understand at their most basic level. So at the most basic level, computers are electrical devices and all they really understand is, is electricity flowing or is it not? Well, if they're that simple, how do they represent songs and movies and pictures and all of the things that we look at on a computer on a daily basis? Well, let's think about a light switch in our house and how I could use a light switch to transmit data. Imagine you have a friend that lives in the house opposite you on a street and you want to transmit some data to your friend. Um, I could transmit the word yes by turning my light on and I could transmit the word no by leaving my light off so my friend could shout a question and I could switch my light on meaning yes and leaving it off uh, meaning no. So I'm transmitting there some basic data. Okay, but what if he asked me a slightly more complex question, a question where I want to say yes, maybe, I'm not sure, and no. Well, for that, I'd need two lights. I'd need two light switches. I could switch both lights on to mean yes. I could switch the left light on to mean maybe. The right-hand light on to mean I'm not sure. And the uh, leave both lights off to mean no. So one uh, light switch allows me to transmit two bits of data. Two light switches allows me to transmit four bits of data. Now let's imagine I had a million lights or a billion lights all in a row. That's exactly how a computer works. There are billions of microscopic switches within a computer processor. Each one of them can either be on or off. And using those billion switches, uh, I can make trillions of combinations of different pieces of data. Using that allows me to represent every number in the world, every letter in the world, every colour, every sound, and, and much, much more. And that's how we can use binary uh, and very basic binary signals within a computer to represent really complex uh, ideas, pieces of data, and different tasks. Today's lesson really focuses on numbers. So how can I represent the number 194 using binary? Well, uh, binary is made up of bits. Each singular digit, 0 or 1, is what we call a bit. Eight binary bits makes a byte. 
and binary numbers nearly always come in bytes in uh, eight bits in eight binary bits you will be asked within your exam to convert binary numbers to deanery now deanery is a complex word meaning basic numbers one two three four five six seven those are all example of deanery numbers so let's look at the binary number zero one zero one one zero zero one that is a byte of information one byte how would I convert that to deanery well the first step is to label the numbers from right to left, doubling each time. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And if you need it, you just keep going. You just keep doubling each time. The key bit there is to always start at 1 and always go from right to left. The mistake that students often make in their exam is to go from left to right as if you were writing normally. Now a 1, a binary 1, means that that number is on. A binary 0 means that that number switch is off. You're going to want to write down all of the numbers that are on. So 64, 16, 8 and 1 are all switched on because the switch is set to 1. Step 3, add those numbers up, 89. So this example equals 89. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 represents 89 in deanery. That's going to be a two mark question in the exam, a one mark for showing you're working and a second mark for the answer. Now, as I said, binary uh, numbers always come in eight bits. However, if they didn't, it would be exactly the same process. Step one, label the numbers from right to left, doubling each time. Step two, write down all of the numbers that are switched on. Step three, add them up. And there is your answer. At this point, pause this video and have a go at the five questions that are on your screen. As always, label the numbers from right to left, doubling each time. If there are eight bits, you'll label from one to 128. If there are less than eight bits, still start at one, but just stop at whatever bit you, you get to. So if there are four bits, you would label them one, two, four, and eight. Pause the video now and have a go at these questions. The answers to those are now on your screen. So you should have got 255, 17, 85, 5 and 7. A very quick trick. If the last bit is on, the number is always going to be odd. If the last bit is off, the, num the answer is always going to be even. That gives you a 50-50 chance to check your answer. If the, the last bit is off and your number is odd, you know you've done something wrong. The other thing that we need to do is to be able to convert the other way round. So we're given a deanery number, uh, 112, and asked to write down the binary for that. Well, that's going to involve some trial and error. Which switches, which numbers need to be on to add up to 112? Now, there is a really good game online to help you out with this one. I've posted the link both in the video and I'll post this in the comments section below as well. Open up this game and have a quick fire go at making uh, deanery numbers from binary and the other way around. Last in this section, uh, a, a short essay question. Explain why binary is vital for modern computers to be able to function. Consider the way computers work, the way data is input and output from the system, as well as the way it is stored within a computer. This is the sort of question you may get asked as a slightly more extended answer in Unit 1. Take a go at this one before we move on. Binary addition, well this is a fairly simple concept. It means adding two binary numbers together and we do that by following a set of uh, very, very strict rules. And if you follow those rules every time, uh, you will always get the correct answer. 
So computers often need to add two binary numbers together. Computers undertake billions of calculations each second, and many of those calculation, uh, calculations will involve addition. Uh, we need to understand the basis of how this works, but all you're going to be asked to do is to add two binary numbers together in the exam. I'm going to go through the three rules and then we'll look at, at an example. The example will make a lot more sense, uh, or the rules will make a lot more sense once we've had a look at the example. If we add a zero and a zero together, the answer is a zero. If we add a one and a zero together, the answer is a one. And if we're adding two ones together, the answer is 10 or one zero. Uh, so a zero in the col current column with a one carried over. Now remember those rules, but they will make more sense on the next slide. So let's look at our first example. You're always going to write down your binary addition in this way with the sums underneath one another in very defined columns. If you're given the question going across the page, still write it down like this. We start off by looking at our first column. In that column, we've got a one and a zero, and we know that that adds up to make a, a one. The next column is the same, but the other way around, a zero and a one still makes a one. And the next column is a zero and a zero, which we know makes a zero. The next column is the first one where we've got a slightly more complex uh, calculation to undertake. A one and a one makes one zero. I put a zero in the current column and I carry my one across. This means that in my next column, I'm adding a one, a zero and a one or two ones together. So again, I put a zero and I carry my one across. In this column, I'm now adding a one, a zero and a zero, which we know equals one. The penultimate column is a one and a one. So again, I'm gonna to need to carry a number. I'm gonna put a zero in the current column and I'm gonna carry my one across. My final column then adds up to a, uh, a one. So there is my answer for my binary addition. If you're doing this in the exam, it's gonna be worth checking it if you've got time. Using the uh, previous slides, I'm gonna convert the first uh, row and I know that that makes 73 if I, if I work that out. The next column equals 90. And my answer equals 163. Well, 73 add 90, yep, that equals 163. So while you'll need to show you're working in the exam, you can certainly check your answer by converting both of the numbers in the question and adding those deanery numbers together. Take a go at the following examples. Pause the video at this point and add those numbers together. Now I've purposely written those going across the slides, um, but make sure you write them down in columns going down the page as in the example. Pause now and the answers will be up in a second or two. There are the answers for those questions. Um, hopefully those are what you uh, worked out. Next, we've got this idea of overflow errors, and some of you may already have the question in your head. What happens if I carry a one across in the final column? Well, that is called an overflow error. That is when a binary addition uh, results in more than eight bits, meaning the, the final bit overflows outside of the byte that we're working with. That will make more sense in this example. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, but the first ones add up to a one, a zero. We're going to do some carrying across there. But when we get to our end, we'll notice that in this column, I'm carrying across a one. And that means that my final column is going to involve a bit being carried over. I'm adding a one, a zero and a one. So I've got a one in this column, but that means a one carried over. Now that means I need to add a one down the bottom. Any blanks count as a zero. So I'm adding in that final column a one, a zero, and a zero. Now we said at the start, binary numbers always come in eight bits. This isn't eight bits, this is nine bits. So this would be an overflow error. My first uh, eight bits, or my right hand eight bits, make the first byte, and I've then got the one at the end left over. That's called an overflow error. 
our final example is more complex again in that we're going to end up with three ones in a column. So I start off the same, I'm carrying my numbers across, but when I get here, I'm going to put a zero because I've got two ones and then a one is carried across. Now that results for the first time in three ones in a column. If you end up with three ones in a column, we put a one and carry a one. Okay, now that again is going to result in an overflow error, but also shows us what we do if we ever come across uh, a question where we're ending up with three ones in a column because of the way we've carried our numbers over. Three ones equals one one. On your screen there are three more examples. These are going to result in some form of overflow error. Pause the video now and have a go at these three examples. And there are your answers. So we've now had a good look at what binary is and how binary addition works. Uh, the next thing to look at is multiplying and dividing numbers. Now the good news is that that is really quite straightforward. It's called a binary shift and that means moving binary numbers to the left or to the right to divide or multiply them. As I say, thankfully this book is really quite straightforward. If I want to multiply a binary number by 2, I move each bit 1 to the left and I put a 0 in the blank space that appears. If I want to divide by 2, I move each binary bit to the right, discarding the uh, right hand bit and putting a 0 in the blank space that appears. Now all that will do is multiply or divide by 2. Fortunately, that's all we need to worry about as part of the OCR GCSE. So let's look at our first example. We're going to look at multiplying the binary number 12 by 2. 12 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 in binary. All we need to do is move every number 1 to the left. The top, hand, uh, the top row is the uh, original question and the bottom row is the answer. You'll notice that every bit has moved one to the left and a zero has been placed in the one column. Division is the other way round. So I now want to divide the number 15 by two. Now again, in the top uh, row, I've got the number 15, zero, 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 one, 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 one. To divide that number by two, I just move every bit one to the right. I get rid of the bit in the one column and I add a zero in the 128 column. That divides our number by two. As is noted there, uh, the answer is 7.5. However, the, the answer that you'll see there is actually seven. Again, we, d we don't need to worry about that part until we move on to A level. Uh, the, the fact we've removed the, the bit from the one column get rid, gets rid of the decimal answer. Now again, don't worry too much around that. Uh, for now, if you can divide and multiply by two, that's all we need to, to know and worry around. On your screen, there are four questions. Have a go at those and the answers will be up in a couple of seconds. There are the answers. You'll note that in two of the examples there, we've got an overflow error. Um, again, don't worry about those. Um, if you're asked in the exam, what issue is this caused? The answer is nearly always an overflow error. The final part of this topic looks at hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is a base 16 number system used to simplify how binary is represented by converting eight bits into just two characters. Binary is what we call a base two number system. That means there are two basic digits, zero and one. That's required because computers work with electricity and all electricity can really do is be on and off. That however means that the, the data can become really, really massive. This PowerPoint is huge over 9 million uh, binary digits just to store this, uh, this PowerPoint and that was at the point when I hadn't finished writing it. 
humans work in base 10. That means there are 10 basic digits. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. This makes our numbers much shorter even when they get very big. So I've given an example on the slide that I'm not even going to attempt to say. But the deanery number on the left is obviously much, much shorter than the binary number on the right, even though they actually mean exactly the same thing. Hexadecimal is a base 16 system. That means it's made up of 16 digits. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So a binary number, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, can become A, A. And the binary number 11000110 becomes C6. You'll notice that the binary has become much, much shorter by storing it as hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is another numbering system that computers can understand. You're going to want to create or write down the following table somewhere. Now in that table I've got three columns. I've got my deanery numbers down the left hand side. I've got a binary column and a hexadecimal column. The first thing we need to do is write down our binary numbers, but this time we're going to write them in 4-bit binary. So a 0 in deanery becomes 0, 0, 0, 0. A 1 becomes 0, 0, 0, 1. Right the way down to 15, which becomes 1, 1, 1, 1. Now in the exam you don't need to remember that, you should be able to work that out. You should be able to work out that an 8 is a 1, 0, 0, 0. The bit you will need to remember is the hexadecimal column. The numbers 0 to 9 are easy because they're exactly the same as the deanery value. The numbers 10 to 15 are slightly harder in that they are the letters A, B, C, D, E and F. Now, if you can uh, remember that table, or at least work out that table, you'll be absolutely fine when it comes to hexadecimal uh, numbers. So, how do I convert uh, between hexadecimal and binary, and then deanery? Well, let's take a binary number, 01011111. We need to take that and look at each four bits. Now, the first four bits, becomes a 5. I know that by looking up 0, 1, 0, 1 in my previous table. A 1, 1, 1, 1 becomes 15. But we know that a 15 is actually F. Now my final answer combines those two things back together. 5F. So the number 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 becomes 5F in hexadecimal. Converting the other way around is the same process. We take our hexadecimal uh, number E7 and I break down the E and the 7 and I look those up as the binary numbers in our table. I then combine that binary back together to get the answer. E7 becomes 11100111. On your screen there are five questions. To convert EE into binary, EF into deanery, so you'll need to convert EF to binary first of all and then convert that value to deanery, 6C into binary and then two binary values into hexadecimal. Now we've gone through that relatively quickly so do go back and have a look at the previous two examples to help you with those answers. Pause the video now and the answers will be up in a couple of seconds. And there are the answers to uh, those five questions. If you didn't get any of those, go back, have another look at the examples and try working through those again. To finish, uh, have a go at this four mark exam style question. Why is hexadecimal a preferable system for storing data than binary? Uh, in many cases. You should include reference to where you've seen hexadecimal before. Now you probably have without having noticed it. If you've ever used Adobe Photoshop, whenever you go in to select a colour, you'll note those colours are stored in hexadecimal by combining three hexadecimal strings together. 
It's also used in website design when we add colors to a CSS file. Have a go at that question. Uh, do some research online if you feel you need to. Well done, you've made it through this fairly lengthy video looking at what binary and hexadecimal are. This slide tries to combine everything together in terms of a final revision guide and everything that you would need to know. Hopefully you found that video useful. If not, please do go through and have, a, have another look. And if not, have a look at what else you can find on YouTube. If you have got any questions, please post those either on Google Classroom or in the comments section below. Thank you very much.